And this morning I also have a message for our government. And because I believe you are the government, because you created this government, I would love to give the message in your hearing. Hallelujah. Praise be to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this, a few facts. Facts. Number one is that this government that we have was not brought into being by the number of votes we voted. Anybody arguing about percentages and their contribution in terms of votes is totally misplaced. Unless if we argue that our prayers, our fasting, and our prophecies did not matter. It is your vote that counted. The formation of this government that we have in Kenya is purely a doing of Jehovah. We may miss the mark at some point. But that does not take away the fact that God ordained this government to be in place. Any other argument that your votes counted is politically correct, but it is totally untrue. If God never wanted this government, every other factor indicated that this government was not going to be. I have observed carefully what has been going on in the nation and the country. I have personally gone to radio and local TVs and even our national television giving views on my tech, on issues of church and on issues going around the presidency. I gave my opinion and what I think can be. But after I finished giving the opinion, Later, I also came back to my senses and I said, God, how do you want this nation to be? What do you want this nation to be like? Especially on matters to do with the president, President William Ruto and his deputy. There are many prophecies going on. But some of our prophecies sometimes is... Uh, about is, is, is a question of analyzing politi politically, you know, like, like now when you look at everything you see, the MPs are against, they are in to impeach the debut president. What we are not asking is whether that is the will of God. What is the will of God in this situation? I asked God, what is your will? The truth is, the deputy president has not presented himself as a deputy president of Kenya. He has singled out Mount Kenya. That's why he speaks in the vernacular. God, did you know that this man will speak in the vernacular when he comes into power? So that's why I asked God, what is your will on this matter? And the Lord told me, clearly, and that's how I want to speak to the nation. It took me back to a message of a man of God. Down in Zimbabwe. Called here and in Drof. God took me to a message of 18 September 2022. Said to remember what I told my son. And this is what the nation should look at. And he said if the president does not listen to this message. It will make a plunder of his lifetime. God gave me an illustration for the president. He told me this. Tell the president. And this he must listen. You might have a girlfriend. Other than your wife. But when you become seriously sick. The girlfriend can never take care of you in hospital. It is your wife that you hate. That will come and stand by you. That's what God told me. And I know the president is African. He can understand this. The only woman who understands you is your wife. Girlfriends are good when things are good. But when things are bad, wives are good. Then God get, told me, tell your president to remember the story of Jacob. Jacob was given a wife by God. But the father-in-law changed the wife and gave him another. But Jacob had the wisdom to labor for the wife he wanted. Let the president do everything possible within his power 
to maintain the wife it was given by God. She might have weaknesses, but she's a God-given wife. Somebody may say, could, it, could this man be advocating for the David president when he has seen all the MPs? I don't mind the MPs. I have never been given a prophecy about them because they don't matter to God. The matter that concerns God is matter of presidency and David president. That's where the interest of God is for the nation. Listen to me. As God was finishing speaking to me, he took me to Matthew 27. And I want to read for you. Matthew 27, verse 19. It's not a warning, sir. We love you. But listen to me. Very soon, the people you are putting in your government will connive. And they will withdraw at once. And they will say, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is not working. Mark my words. Very soon, very soon, when you marry a woman when you don't have money, and she's willing to stay with you, you cannot equate her with the woman that comes when you have vehicles. You are driving and you have a house. This woman that comes because you are now moneyed and you have property, when the property goes down, she will go down also. Don't confuse the wife of your youth and the wife that comes in when you have <laughs> resources. Matthew 27 verse 19. Are you there? Matthew 27 verse 19. This is a dream of a woman in a state house. A woman, women in a state house can also dream. This woman in a state house dreamed about Jesus. Then she gave the report to the husband. And maybe the husband did not take it serious. He thought she was just dreaming. Now listen to the dream. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for pronouns. The chief, listen, president. There are people that are going to persuade you to do something contrary to a dream. The chief priests and the elders, these are parliamentarians, people who make a decision. They can be there in numbers. They persuaded the crowds. They will be there in numbers. But listen to this dream. Are you there? So God is saying, the president should find time. Listen to the message that was given by God to a man of God in Zimbabwe called Ian Indroff. For me, God gave me the verse, Matthew 27, that have nothing to do with this man. But he also told me to let the president find time tonight, today, today, Saturday, 28th of September. I'm talking about 18th September 2022. We are now on 28th September 2024. Please find time, Your Excellency. Listen to the message that was given by God to Ihiani Indrof, a prophet in Zimbabwe. When God sent me to listen to him, I listened. And then God told me the story of Jacob and Laban and the two women. But he told me the wisdom of Jacob is that he allowed himself to go an extra mile to labor and sacrifice for what he wanted, not what his father-in-law wanted. Our government is missing a point. You started by God. You want to win by politics. I have, yes, it's a political process, but this particular one, required the intervention of God to succeed. Of course, the angels and the God could not vote. It is we that voted. But it took the hand of God to deliver what he wanted. And let me tell you, this has nothing to do with anything else but the gospel. That is why this is the first time that people are rising up to challenge the church because we are supposed to preach the gospel. The big point is 
they are lying to him. They are lying to him. One of these fine days, and I told you, I think, about two months ago, they will all gang up and say, Kenya Kwanza government is not working.